Hey everyone, Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com. We're live. We're in multiple places at one time. Now, Jason Cole and I are in Nashville, Tennessee, and that's not why I have my hat on. But Matt Gunn is not in Nashville. Matt Gunn, where are you at, man? I am at Sellersburg, Indiana, the booming metropolis of Sellersburg, at the IMPBA Gas Nationals Boat Race, the largest boat race of the year in the United States. It is insanity. Not only is it freaking hot as heck, but there we're running take a wild guess how many heat races we're running today. Wait, Three, did you say this is sponsored by PBR by Paps Blue Ribbon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. What PBT. uh gotcha. Yeah, take a wild guess, Jason. What'd you say? He said Three, twenty-two. Five. Okay, we're running 170 heats today. What? Every, every single day for for three days. And if there's a shootout, we'll do that. It is Dude, uh The drone racing insane. world could take tips from these guys, huh? Yeah, man, they got it down to a science. And, and maybe, and the reason I'm in my truck right now, number one, it's so hot. It says, here, check this out. Can you see my, um, uh, there we go. Look at that temperature. Wow. Nice. <laughs> 99 degrees. It's, there's nothing happening. Just sort of in limbo for a few minutes here while we, uh, while we they, they get the next heat going. But uh, the reason I am chilling here is because it's hard to hear. I can't even hear my phone. The, the sound of Zenoa uh, G260s that are putting out 6, 7 horsepower, 16,000 RPMs with no mufflers whatsoever, just tune pipes. It's so loud that I can't hear you guys, so that's why I jumped in my truck. But maybe towards the end, we'll go tour around for a few minutes. We'll see if we can do that. I was, I was talking to Matt earlier, and he pointed the phone at his ear, so I had this really in-depth view of Matt's inner ear canal. <laughs> I know you. I was waiting for you to say something. I was, I was trying desperately to listen to you, so I'm like this. Hi, uh, everybody. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so uh, I won't do that anymore. But, I'm a little uh, disappointed uh, in you, Matt. I'm a little disappointed, Matt. What's Why? I, I, I was really hoping that you would be the first FPV boat racer of all time. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think that already happened if you go to, uh, well, not for boat racing. Now, if I tried to FPV boat race, Either they would say no and disqualify me, although I don't think there's anything in the rules that state against it. Right. So, uh, you know that guy on Ready Made RC's homepage, I think there's a guy that is FPVing the uh, the Alligator Tours boat, or what you want to, what's that new one, the Cajun yeah. Commander? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he had a 433 long range and 2.4 gig uh, um, BTX. And this guy headed out on the, I mean, he was a few thousand feet out in the water at like 6 a.m. on a glassy lake, and there were guys that were doing the paddle boarding, and he would go up next to him and look at him and then keep going. He was out in the middle of the lake, so it was pretty cool. Nice. So what are you guys doing? Well, I was a little late today getting the podcast kicked up because I was trying to finish a build before tomorrow, Jason, in case you and I can go out and fly this thing before I leave on my vacation next week. Mm -hmm. That's going to be fun. Where are you, you going? Know, I'm going to Champaign, Illinois for a week. I've got a fancy hotel. I've got the whole family. We're going to go to all the tourist spots in Champaign. <laughs> in Champagne? No, no, I'm going, I'm going to Mexico. My my mama, who I won't say how old she is because she'd kill me, lives in Mexico on the beach, and she'll say, why don't y'all come see me? And we have yet to say no. <laughs> That's the so, way it should be, man. You know, you got to look out for your mama. Well, yeah, and she lives on the beach of Mexico, so there's a lot going on there in that little scenario. Oh, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Now, I, I did tell a story last year where... Uh, one of her neighbors said, yeah, I've got a quad. I'll bring it to the pool. So there are children <laughs> and people and this guy. And I know he'll never see this podcast. But I said, you're not going to fly that here, right? There's palm trees. And, uh, you know, it's just not, I would personally never. And before I could even uh, offer a word of warning, this guy was in the air 
And then I'm like, uh, I was about to tell him to slow it down. He flew straight into a palm tree and crashed right next to children. I mean, wow. And I looked at my mom and I said, tell him to stop and I have to get out of here. <laughs> I can't be flying around with this crazy guy. Jeez, man. You know, every time you tell that story, I live vicariously through you. And uh, I can only imagine you're like, really, guy? You're going to do that here and now? So, so the, the next time they, I see, uh, they, they fix they fix the quadcopter and the next the next uh, like an hour later I see them all in the golf cart and they said we're going to the golf course to let the kids fly this gigantic uh, DTI thing and I'm like bye good luck <laughs> what's That's happening scary. over there now Matt uh, it is starting to pour let's see oh. if you guys can see out my window here really? so it's just starting to rain. Uh, this is the first rain we've had, really, of the event. And they'll keep going through it, usually, if it's not lightning. Is so, it like a covered uh, driver's stand area? It is not. It is not. But they, nobody wants to race on Sunday. Everybody wants to drive home on Sunday. Yeah. So, uh, your umbrella. so let's, see if you guys, let's see if you guys can see out here. Uh, there's a little dude walking past in front of my car. Hey, dude. Okay. Oh, there he is, right there. Okay, He's so see, in the car? You, you can see. I don't know who that kid is. I'm not going to put him in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get rid of the. There we go. So there, they're they're racing out there. This is uh, it's hard to see. I know, but right now is they're doing what's called milling, which is you have two minutes and thirty seconds to mill before that counts down to zero and you cross the line. And you cannot cross over if you cross over the line. Um, on the last 15 seconds, uh, then you are down a lap and you have to catch that back up. And so right now they're milling, and then they'll be like five, four, three, two, and then everybody will blast wide open for six laps, and then uh, they come in. So yeah, you can sort of see them there. I apologize if it's from this angle. We'll go out again. I we'll go out in a few minutes and and check it out. But I've won my. I've, Two races I've been in so far, I've won, and then uh, one race I crashed out uh, in a different that cracker box. The cracker box that you guys like so much, I um, it, I crashed out because it's a very difficult. It's not. It's a flat bottom boat. It's basically an airboat that goes 60 miles an hour. Uh, if you think about the flat bottom of it, it doesn't want to turn. It doesn't want to steer, and so I flipped it over, crashed out. It was really ugly. But my cat the one that has the Flying Giants logos on it, I've won both races so far that I've been in with it. So. Cool, man. Wow. Yes. Now, I, I hear that you're going to switch Flying Giants totally over to Giant Scale Boats. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm glad you gave me the approval to do that uh, over the phone. Do you remember when you said that? Yes, yes. <laughs> All boats from now on on Flying Giants. There you go. Well, we, you heard are, it. Are, are we making that announcement today? Like we're changing the name of Flying Giants? We just did. Giants? That was the... Flying giant boats. <laughs> flying giant boats. Yeah, it can't be floating giants because they're basically flying. So uh, the cool right, thing right. is they're with these cats, the cats yeah. build up the air underneath them, so they're just uh, they're kind of flying, I guess you could say. <laughs> I like that idea of uh, floating giants. That's that's got a nice ring to it. I don't know how much uh, revenue there is to be made in such a small, small aspect of the hobby. Hey, it's know. all about the community, man. Yeah, it's hey, all about the passion, Matt. There's 300 people here at this at this boat race. That's a lot. That's There's cool. no way I would commit to 170 heats a day. That, that, I've never well, heard of such a thing. I'm pretty impressed because the DLG contest I'm going to this uh, Saturday and Sunday is there's about uh, 15 people scheduled to compete. So vastly yeah. different there. Well, they're running. It is just nonstop as fast as they because the retrieve boat has to go out every race. Oh, and pick up people. Carnage yeah. every single race. Boats yep. hit each other. Boats flip all the time. They're running on the ragged edge the entire time. These boats right now are doing 70 miles an hour. And then they flip, and they stuff, and they go submarine down and float back up. And nice. So as fast as the free boat can get them and go back, they um, they start the next race. We've been racing since 7 a.m. It's 3.11 right now. Ooh. Breaking news. I've got breaking news. I've got an email just in from Ashley, uh, Miss Ashley, RC Group's Ashley. She will not be on the podcast today. Uh, 
One day, one she's, day we'll get her on. She's driving to Missouri to the big uh, extreme flight uh, fly-in up there. All she really needs to do is put her phone in her seat and face it towards her so she can just drive and not look. Or pull over like we did that one time. Yeah. Hey, we're going to be all traveling next month, huh? Oh, my gosh. I am so excited. Who's going to announce it? Which one of you two are going to talk about well, it? I guess we're not talking about it. <laughs> okay. Well, more about that next week <laughs> on the first <laughs> the live hangout. Woo! Jason Cole! <laughs> ah, whoop! Ah, that's right. That's okay. We okay. have fun. This is what it's all about. So, you know, I was going to try to get a uh, guest uh, host on today, and I'll tell you all who I called. I called Crash Hancock from the Crash Cast, and let me see if I got this right. Um, as you know, Crash uh, caught a little bit of cancer, and he's undergoing treatments, and I think today might be his final treatment. I don't want to say that for, for sure, but that's why Cra otherwise Crash would be on with us right now talking. Yeah, man, that's awesome that this is the final one, and uh, you know, Crash is the man. I hate the c word, and everyone hates it. But what do you do, right? You just you beat it and do submission, and you move on, right? That's right. I told him to keep kicking ass, or maybe beat it into remission. How about yeah, that? He, he doesn't say this is his last one, but I know he is on his last couple of uh, poison pumps, as he calls it here in the PM. So yeah. Uh, no, no crash. And then I was hoping to have Ashley on as a guest star. And like I said, she's up there driving. But Matt, it's good to have you in the car. And lucky uh, that the rain came when it did. Because and so you think this rain's going to make it hot and humid, or do you think that'll knock a little heat out of your show? Well, it doesn't really matter because it's gone now, and uh, everything's already dry. <laughs> it's, it's stifling, dude. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I am okay. So I'm from Savannah, Georgia. Lived in Atlanta for, I don't know, 12, 13 years, met my lovely wife, and then we decided uh, we would move up to Cleveland, Ohio to be closer to her family, and now I am a weather wuss. I can't take the heat. Like, this is, the, the humidity is just brutal here, and it's just, I'm, all I'm doing is just drinking, drinking, drinking water. You uh, know, they've, they've proven that uh, different climates thicken and thin your blood, so... You actually well, I must have some pretty thin blood now, or however it goes, I must uh, be on the opposite end of the of the spectrum. So, Jason Cole and I were at the airfield this week. Jason had a vast cavalcade of RC products that we had to videotape <laughs> and shoot photographs of. This is true. Very he true, had, man. Well, what, is is the wider within reaching distance? It's right here, man. Did I not? I, th oh. I feel like I've talked about this before. You have, but we I flew it last nice. week, and it was pretty awesome. I'm going to present uh, Jason Cole now. Presenting the so, BAS Wyburn. So you smoked out your first motor. Yeah, and so I, mean, I figured out what I did. So it's the Micro Dan uh, 2510. It's from GoBrushless.com. He hand builds these motors. <laughs> They're serious, like high quality. It has some really thick stator wire on it. It's a beast of a motor, right? And uh, I guess I had misheard Alex, I'd be crazy, and which prop he was using. So I put a, a 5x5, five five, you know, really, really small prop, right? Oh, and right. Uh, it was only pulling. I've got a 66-amp controller, and at full throttle static here in the shop, it was pulling 60 amps. So I'm like, okay, I'm within spec of the speed controller. Uh, it, it's in spec of the motor. Um, it's going to drop a little bit of amps when it's unloaded flying through the air, so it should be good. And then I had several test flights here in town, and it uh, did great. It was really fast. Um, the batteries were, were uh, not getting too hot. Everything was working just right. And then I get out to the pecan patch, and it's like 95, 98 degrees and over 100 with the heat index. And uh, like the second flight, about a minute in at full throttle, uh, continuous, uh, it just kind of went way low on power, and I brought it in and burned up the motor. So uh, talked to Dan about that, and he said that, uh, yeah, in a pusher configuration, um, you need to you know, definitely have some cooling provisions, which I did not. 
and I was also running a little bit too big of a prop. So I'm going to be dropping down to a four and a half by four and a half <laughs> instead of five five. What That's kind a of big cooling? play for a four inch prop, dude. That's awesome. What kind of cooling provisions? I mean, the the dang motors right there in the wind. Yeah, well, what I'm going to end up doing is this is a polycarbonate mount, and I've got a Stone Blue Airlines aluminum mount. So one thing, ah. what I could do with this one, if I leave the polycarbonate on there, is cut some cooling holes. Um, that'll go right where the uh, motor openings are, so the airflow can go through that. I didn't gotcha. even really. I, I should have thought about it, but if you can see, um, it's like blocking the radiator with a piece yeah, of carbon. It, this is just a big like, you know, air block. Right? Air block. So it's like a lot of drag. I always too. put a piece of foam there yeah. and like a shape shape of foam piece, and so it goes over it. Yeah, so I'm going to end up cutting the motor shaft. If I, li I don't think, I'm not, I'm putting the micro dam back on it because he's going to send it to me, and I don't think it's got a shaft protruding through. I was thinking if I had to do it with this motor, I'd cut this shaft off, and then I've got, I've already got a perfectly sized uh, EPP foam block that I would uh, mount here and streamline to get better uh, aerodynamic uh, airflow through there, and then I can even build in cooling ducts if I needed to into that that would flow right through the motor. I think with the micro dam motor be a little different. I'm gonna try the stone blue mount because it being metal uh, will act as a heat sink with the motor directly attached to yeah, it. Yeah, totally. So and that'll help oh, yeah. draw away heat, get a little cooling in it, Slide and then in. have an aerodynamic uh, piece of foam on top, and should pick up uh, at least a few mile an hour off of that. So, but it's well, it's it looks well over 100 even on this power system. It's with the with the micro dam and stuff, we're pushing 120. Um, Pretty stinking fast, and it carves and grooves. When it's, if it's windy, you get a little bit of bounce. You can see it in my video. It was probably 10 mile per hour winds in the review video, and it's bouncing around a little bit. And I think some of that was probably due to the camera FPV, or not the FPV, but the uh, HD Mobius mount. It's just Velcro, and so I think at those kinds of speeds, we were getting a little bit of movement on the camera uh, right. um, that I wasn't seeing in my FPV view. So it looks pretty dang solid. I should probably try to get a DVR. I just don't have a DVR that I can record 1.3 with. All my DVRs are built in 5.8 like monitors and I can't send an AV signal in and record with the DVR on those. So I don't have like a standalone DVR. I guess that's something I should pick up at some point. Yeah, ready-made RC DVR 1000. Yeah, that would probably help. Uh, but that way I can at least show you everybody what the uh, FPV view looks like because it's pretty pretty groovy. And when it's dead calm outside, it's like you're flying on rails. I mean, it's just super stable. I do have both of the uh, stabilizing fins uh, attached. Those are kind of optional. You need at least some uh, vertical area. Um, but I've seen guys not do the tips and only have the center ones, and I've seen guys not have the ah. center ones and only do the tips. And I was like, I just think it looks cool. And it probably helps it stabilize better in yaw with both of them, and so I did both. And I guess if you pulled off your uh, your wing tips, it would make it maybe roll faster. It, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure what it would do exactly, but you might you might lose a little bit of drag and pick up some speed or something. But I, I kind of like it with it on, and it also uh, they serve as the landing skids because it goes down below the wing as well. So right. you get the front skids and then the middle and the side, and the whole thing is you can land it in pretty rough areas, and it's going to survive. So well, you'd be surprised on how much that uh, 1.3 helical uh, does drag. And yeah, I found out the hard I, I found out the hard way when I mounted one of those, just like that, way out on the wing tip. Yeah. Of my Zephyr three. And at full throttle, it would start to yaw to the yeah. uh, to the left and start yeah. pulling away like it, it had a rudder. So I was like, "What is going on?" I was so mad. And then uh, finally, I ended up taking it off and putting on the um, a uh, linear polarized dipole, and that uh -huh. made all the difference. When yeah. I, of course, the uh, Yagi on the ground. So. Yeah, pop pop like the hood use... on that for everybody, Jason. Yeah. So I was... so inside is where all the yeah. the goodies are. So. Batteries live here. Pulse sent me some of their uh, 75C racing spec 4S 1800 nice. lipos, and they're killer. Um, but we've got a little voltage regulator tucked in here so I can power the uh, video transmitter and camera with 12 volts and everything else. I just made this little um, uh, parallel adapter. I took three Dean's plugs, and uh, just instead of making a wire harness, I just made a direct harness with the plugs themselves. So... Um, just kind of simple and light there. I've got a little buzzer, so if I land out somewhere and need to find it, I can trigger that. 
And then I guess one thing I would say that really surprised me is uh, after watching Alex fly his and uh, Jason Glaze flying his um, at the Stoneville Airlines Flying Circus event, they were landing these things at like 60, 70 miles per hour, like crazy oh, fast. And I was like, why? I was like, why are we landing so fast? And they're like, eh, you know, if you get it too slow, you can stall it out. And I saw one time where Jason was coming in, and and uh, he was flying along, and all of a sudden it just rolled over and and yeah. up and crashed. And I was like, wow, is it that sensitive? I was like concerned. But mine doesn't do that at all, so I don't know why or what is different about mine from theirs, but I can slow this down really well, and the worst thing I've seen it do on landing, you can actually see it in the end of my review video, the nose will kind of buff it a little bit, and I yeah. don't know if it is an off stall or if it's just approaching the stall, but it kind of buffets, um, but I've never had Jimmy it buffet. drop a wing on me. I went <laughs> up high and kind of did that and pulled full elevator and tried to get it to snap off one side or the other real hard, and... And it just didn't do it for me. So I, I slow this thing down pretty dang well and can put it right at my feet. You know why, Jason, right? You know why? why? It's because it? you are a master awesome builder. Hey, I, is that I like a, to attribute to my great sailplane knowledge. I know how to fly on the wing. There's no air inlet going into your... Uh, is that uh, ESC just sitting under there hot? It doesn't get too hot? No, it doesn't get too hot. You're right. There is no airflow. Um... There's, I mean, maybe some if if any comes over the top and catches the backside. Yeah, but it it's, like a, it's an oversized. It. It's an oversized DSC, and and when the motor's unloaded, we're you know we're only pulling 50, 50 something amps, you know, constant at full throttle. If you're full throttle all the time, and for the the five or six minutes that you're flying this during a race, it's perfectly fine. I'm not. Right. It, it's not over hot when you land. The batteries are comfortable. They're not even really hot, barely warm, and then the motor's the worst thing that's getting hot right now, so that's tell what me, needs the real cooling. Tell me about your Doculam process. Document. Oh, so the laminate. So this, yeah, kind of a cool story, right? I was on my Banshee, which you can't really see. I don't know if you, you know, you can kind of see this right here. This is uh, my old uh, Bowman's Hobby scooter. It's a, it's a sailplane, and this is kind of the way we used to do EPP planes, where we would cover it strategically with strapping tape, and then use colored packing tape or zaggy tape, as you might have heard it. Zaggy was kind of the first people to do that. I've got some right over here. And uh, so it's it's great. It's really durable, great for combat, but it's kind of can be heavy. So I I saw laminate planes, and I just thought they looked like crap. You know, it just it's got bubbles everywhere. It just didn't look good, and I just wasn't really hip on the whole laminate idea. And then after building my Banshee and then all the guys that have laminate Banshees, you can hold them side by side, and mine's way heavier. Still flies great, but I was like, okay, maybe there's some benefits to laminate. So I ended up painting this, uh, painting all the foam pieces first, and then uh, I applied the laminate. And then so I watched a couple of the SBA videos uh, of Matt laminating and how he does it and, and Alex how he does it. And it really is just like covering material, like Aura Cover, Ultra Coat. I've done a bunch of that stuff in my past, so I was like, I already had an iron, I kind of knew the process, and I think this is actually easier than covering with Ultra Coat and, and everything. It just, you kind of lay it on, and you just do your iron, and, and you don't have to really stretch anything, it just kind of applies, um, and it was super, super easy and really fast, and then the ailerons are hinged with the laminate. Um, it was super easy. Now, you do get some bubbles and stuff, and there's ways you can kind of get around that. Um, I don't know if I can get the right... Yeah, you is kind it, of see some of the bubbles. That's is due it to the EPP. No, it's just laminate. It's 5 millimeter laminate. laminate. Gotcha. And that's just due to some of the... How, how EPP foam is not perfectly smooth. So one thing I've seen other guys do on planes where weight isn't such a big deal, they'll actually take almost like spackle. There's, uh, there's wow, this really? foam coat finish, I think, that um, foam tack makes. There's just something that you can uh, you can kind of apply it to your wing, and then kind of sand it down. You can get, like, this ultra-smooth surface. I'll be right back. I got some. Yeah, and then uh, then you can put your laminate down, and you won't have any of the bubbles and stuff, and it'll be perfectly smooth, and you won't even know the laminate's there, really. It's just a little shiny, and the paint shows. Um, but it's really strong, like, covering material. It, it helps, you know, it's got carbon spars, but the, the laminate also helps strengthen it. And, uh, you know... I think it's the way to go. So any other EPP planes from now on, I'll be doing the laminate for that. 
Looks like we got old RA cores. What's going on, going on, RA? How's it going? Good to see your face, man. Big flash. So, what was that? Oh, go what's, ahead. Jim, what's Jim got? I don't know. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Oh yeah, can we can hear you me? loud and clear. Oh okay. I I wasn't sure if I had audio on or not because I usually have it turned off here at the house. Gotcha. Well, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, he, he sent me an show. email that he was gonna go over the blue phone, so I figured I would uh, log in and see what you were talking about. Nice. Jim T. Graham. Uh, I guess he's doing something with his with his hair that we can't hear him. <laughs> he can't hear us. That might be best. <laughs> What is he doing? I think it's a cowboy hat with the headphones process. I'm trying a new headphone setup here. <laughs> uh, and it's working now. All right, man, welcome aboard. Thanks, Jim. So uh, I told you all we were looking at uh, having a special guest, and I pinged R.A. because I told him, hey, we're about to talk about the blue foe, so here he is. And I happen to be sitting at my computer with absolutely nothing going on. Awesome. So just to touch on what Jason was talking about, this is the Zaggy tape. Yeah. Yep. It's a it's a special 3M tape, and I actually uh, my second airplane was a Zaggy, and I, I kept this stuff because when I flew profile planes all the time, when I would blow a hole in a wing or something, you could literally just cut this real nice and stick it on there. So that's why I still have some. But I uh, started using I started collecting stickers and uh, started repairing all my airplanes with stickers instead because it looked cooler. But uh, the there thing you're... There is a tape called Extreme Tape that works very well, but if you don't mind a little bit of expense, there's also a Tyvek tape mm -hmm. that is incredibly strong and not very heavy, and we've been actually using that to some extent indoors. Gotcha. So, Jason, is this what you were talking about? Um, yeah, the foam, is it foam finish? Foam finish. Yep. And it's like, let's crack it open. I don't know if I ever have. Oh, it's like, a, it is like a speckle. Yeah. And you know How old is that? Really old. So probably three years old. <laughs> I was wondering, I thought it was going to be hardened. <laughs> and then uh, there's also this hobby coat. This is Beacon too. Durable coating for all surfaces. And I, and I was going to use this to put Velcro on foam, but it never really worked for me. So I don't know, but I will. While we're in the uh, the glue box here, of course, everyone knows about foam tack. If you don't, if you're in the hobby, you should go buy some of this right now at least. And I saw um, RA, you're carrying micro foam tack bottles. Yep, they've got little little. Uh, I don't know. There's six of them in a package, and it's a one ounce package, and they're nice. great for for um, flight boxes for repairs and stuff. And yeah. they're tubes so they don't evaporate. That is awesome because I hate taking this and putting it in my field box and then it uh, ultimately dries up or whatever and, it, and then I have to buy some more. Yeah, I was going to give you a hard time for not having the cap on. Uh, I actually was just using it. And then oh. let me let me brag about one more thing. Power Tack by Beacon. So this is like an epoxy and I have used it on everything. My, my uh, son... I was sitting down here yesterday, and I heard a loud thud, and my son came down here. He had broken his favorite uh, SpongeBob SquarePants square coffee mug, and I put it back together with this. He broke a gas pedal on a video game, and the only thing holding it on were two sides and a little tang in the middle, and I said, this will not work, but we'll try it. And I glued this gas pedal that he actuates with his foot like a crazy person with this stuff, and it's still <laughs> holding on. <laughs> nice. Own it. Own it. The other thing that I want to mention, Jim, is the foam finish that you were talking about at first and stuff. You want yes. to put that on in thin coats. Yeah. You want to – nope, the, the, foam, the foam finish, the spackle. The spackle. <laughs> yes. You want to put it on – yeah, you want to put it on with a credit card or something so that it's very thin, and then it's sandable. If you put it on thick, it gets gummy. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So while we're here, I'm going to – oh, man, I haven't been presenting the whole time. No one's seen a thing I've shown. No, your face comes up when you talk. Does it? Okay. Let me turn the present off and stop presenting. Okay. So, uh, so uh, guys, I'm getting a little bit of a uh, 
signal problem out here. I'm having a hard time, so bear with me. Sorry. Yeah, you should probably go, Matt, and get get back to business. Yeah. I got a race. I got a race coming up in three races, so I was about to bail out on you guys anyway. Well, jump out now. We got Mr. R A to take your place. He he's not as uh, redheaded as you, but but he's he'll he'll work out. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I was wondering what you were gonna say. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, look, have a good. Thanks. Have a good time. Um, thanks for having me on here, out here at the uh, IMPBA Gas Naps, and I will keep you all updated on how I do. Nice. Let us know. Bye. 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 Later, man. Good luck. Bye. So, all right. You haven't seen this yet, have you? No, and it looks like you're going to FPV it like I did. Yeah. Well, that's what I bought it for, and uh, I was kind of going for race stripes. And one idea I had was I was going to use some uh, silk. And spray paint it like a low rider, you know, where you spray through the pattern and then you peel it back. And um, I didn't do that though. I did this instead on a Sunday while I was building the 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 unit. So this is your, the blue foe, blue foe, and it's uh, designed by. He's got a long name and it's got a car in it. What's that guy's name? Gold Dernberger. <laughs> and, and Metro GTI is his Correct. username. And so this comes as a kit from RA Cores, and uh, it is multiple pieces of EPP that have been laser cut out. I sort of used the instructions. I also went to the thread and looked at pictures and um, made sure I was... It's pretty easy. Yeah. And uh, so the reason I was standing there, the story is this. I'm at Joan Hall. I'm taking pictures in the vendor forum. And uh, I'm at RA's place with all the uh, ready-made RC guys, and I said, "Hey, what's this?" And and they said, "It's awesome. You should get one." And so uh, I wanted something that I could FPV that would be kind of easy to haul, and you know, if you crashed it, you wouldn't cry. But at the same time, my wing didn't track very well, so when I cruise around a corner, I felt like it was skittering, you know. And so they say that this thing tracks really well. Talk to us about how it flies, all right? Well, it, it does fly very well, and it, it's got a lot of vertical surfaces, so it really it really weather vanes pretty well in the wind, and so you get you get it going nice and nice and slow, and the slope in the nose gives you a good platform to mount the camera on, so that you can actually look down. And I've actually seen some guys that have put a nine gram servo in there and mount their wow. camera that so that they can use their rudder to look left and right. Gotcha. I uh, I was working hard. I'm leaving town next week, and so I'm still not sure if we're going to get to the field and be able to get a video of this in time before I leave, but I was working hard to get it done, and so I knew that I had this, I have a whole fat shark thing sitting, I have two of these units in the back. So this is a simple fat shark camera, and all I did was cut a slit and then make uh, some downward cuts, and then I foam tack this guy in there. Because, you know, you can always pull the foam tack off. Yep. The hey, only Jim, 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 Jim. Hold that up to the camera again. Check. Uh, the only thing that I see that might be an issue is your down angle, because you will end up flying at low speed in a high alpha. Oh. The other thing that I see, Jim, is you might be 90 degrees rotated. I don't oh. think that camera... Uh -huh. No, I'm not. I tested it before I put it in there. Really? The mount, yeah. the mounting positions are usually on the side. That's well, interesting. the way that you can tell is that the fat shark actually, I don't know if you can see it here, but it says fat shark right there. Okay. Fat shark is up, then your camera Weird. is right. I don't yeah. think I've seen one that looks like that before. That's cool. So, the other thing I did, talking about earlier, Jason, you were talking about your antenna. Of course, your antenna is a lot bigger than my 5.8 antenna, but yeah. I just cut a little slit. And for now, based on my CG, um, it's living just in the in the front here, and it's. I'm going to give this a shot for now. Yeah, it should work fine. If I like it, I'll probably mount it, uh, hard mount it to the front, and have this pop poking out the side, or maybe even out the top if I can get it in there just right. Yeah, the only thing that I the only thing that I added to mine was a simple OSD so that I at least saw my battery voltage. Well, and that was the one thing I was going to say. So let's check this thing out real quick. So this is the Fat Shark unit, and I don't think these are very expensive, and I've used it. I know it works well. And then the cool part is it has this that comes off, and this plugs into any uh, just about every balance tab that you can think of. 
So it's going to be powered off this balance tab. The only drag is I use uh, audible alarms on my balance tabs to tell me when to land because I've already smoked one of the packs. I've got 1,500s. Is there one in here? Yeah. I've got 1,500s in here. So I'm not sure how I'm going to monitor my pack other than just time, which I hate doing. Right. Use the and force, then, man. Use the force. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> I think the 1,300 will give me about 10 minutes on those. Wow. Okay, well, I'll, maybe I'll set it for seven and start pushing out from there. So here's my setup inside. How do you like that, Ari? Does that look good? It does nice and nice and tight, and that yep. also moves the moves the ESC away from your transmitter. Yep. It, there's that, and then I was also keeping in mind that the ESC is poking out, so it's catching some of the air. Although I have completely blocked any air coming out of this hole here, so that might be a problem. What do you think you about that? Vents in the side. Yeah, like, uh, ooh, I didn't even think of that until I just looked at it. Yeah, if you don't have an exit, you should cover the inlets. Well, what do you what do you think, R.A.? Do you think some some slits right here? I don't have any, any external cooling, and I don't have a problem with it um, overheating at all because it, you know, if you're going to drain a 1,300 in 10 minutes, you're not putting a lot of amps. Yeah, yeah. It probably, cooling is probably not a big deal. So it's it's got oh, inlet holes. I couldn't tell. It's got uh, one right here on the front. Yeah. You probably just cover that up and streamline it. And well, don't I can worry literally about it. push the foam back in the hole. Yeah. Like that. So uh, one other thing I did, RA, is this motor comes with a uh, what's it called? I've never I never used it my whole career. The little oh, rubber yeah. a prop saver. Prop saver. Yeah. Prop saver, and I couldn't get a prop to work with it. And all my props didn't seem to like the uh, the shaft size. But and it's so one side is for slow fly, and the other side is for direct drive. Oh, I did not know that. So you this, probably had it on a slow flight, and then that didn't fit anything. Yeah, and so I, this this I uh, uh collets anyway. So yeah, I understand. Yeah, I had the collet sitting in a drawer. And then I called Jason and said, should I just cut this long uh, prop? Uh, I've lost Motor the word. Shaft. Motor shaft. And he's like, yeah, man, cut it with the Dremel. And one thing I'll say if you're listening and this matters to you, uh, Jason gave me a great tip. He said, uh, put your motor in a baggie, a plastic baggie, and poke the motor shaft through, and that way you don't get any shavings in the motor while you're cutting it. Yep. Awesome. I'm going to put that in the review. But uh, I've got an 8 Three eight on here. Okay. So a little more torque, but uh, I'm sure it'll work fine. Yeah, I've been using just the the old GWS eight fours and stuff, and that's been running fine. Yeah. That, that's what's giving me the ten minutes. Um, that's what we use on the mini Gremlins as well. So that's you know that's where that comes from. One other thing I saw you do that I thought was awesome is hinging on these. So these are cut. You put a straight uh, metal ruler on top and do your standard uh, cut here to get your bevel. But to hinge it, I, when I read it, I couldn't believe it. I didn't believe that it would actually work. <laughs> um, you take your foam adhesive, no, I mean your foam tack, and you do a bead down right here on the edge, and you push these two surfaces together, pull them back, and then I would count to 15, put them back together, and then I took my finger and wiped it smooth and then let it sit. Yep. And check, that's all that this is. There's no tape or anything. Nope. And uh, check, if I, I can hold this by my hand, and that I guess it works forever. Yeah, and the other thing is that um, if you want to keep the hinges loose, you can use a minimal amount of glue because you can always put more on. And if you tear a hinge, you just put another smear on. Yeah. And so uh, the the trick to that is I did a glue line all the way down, and so what RA is saying is you could go here, 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 and here, leave everything else alone, and then that gives you more freedom. Foam tack, foam tack will stiffen up over the first 24 hours, and a lot of guys will do too much and will find that the hinges get too stiff. And the thing to do then is take your X-Acto knife and just make a dotted line down through it. Gotcha. I, I can't. I worked blend derm and tape like that back in the early days, and of course it was always coming off, and you're always rubbing it on, and you don't want the elevator falling off in flight. So this is an awesome solution. 
Well, the other thing is that you can smear a little bit of foam tack on the ends and put a little put a little blend derm on the on the very ends if you really want to, but it's not necessary. Yeah. And I foam tack like uh, the Velcro holding this battery on is foam tacked, and I'm letting it. Dr it's probably dry now, but I w it was sitting in there. One thing I also did that is an old trick from the old days. I'm not sure if guys still do it. Uh, this camera always throws me off. So whenever somebody sends me a wooden a hinge like this or a uh, horn, I will take thin CA before I mount it, and I'll put a drop of thin CA on the horn, and, and I had this in there already, just to totally stiffen up that wood and make it three times as strong. Yep. So I did that to, the, to these as well. And then the whole center structure, all this stuff is foam tacked together. And then I did use CA on some of the other pieces that I was wanting to just dry quick. Are you, are you against CA on this? Well, I have, I have CA issues with the amount of building that I do for the ready-to-flies, so I tend to use a minimal amount of CA. So for the majority of my EPP building, I will build with foam tack, and I only use CA on the push rods. Ah, gotcha. Well, I find I, foam tack on the uh, carbon fiber uh, reinforcements and stuff works real well because it, it doesn't get brittle and it, it stays a little bit flexible so it doesn't worry itself off with vibration. That is definitely the problem with CA is over time it, it's brittle and will break. And, and foam tack just becomes a part of the foam almost, it seems. Right. So if, uh, if this is something you're interested in, you can find it. And we haven't flown it yet. Maybe tomorrow. Um, you can find it at RA Cores. Is your website ra cores.com? No dash. No dash. Just ra cores.com. And, and I see a guy on, um, on Facebook actually make some 3D printed battery trays that fit right into the back there. And uh, they, they have strap mounts as well. So that's, that's something that I'll probably put up on the website in the near future and stuff. But that will alleviate any problems with getting the batteries in and out. And uh, one trick, uh, uh, let's talk about the price. The actual frame itself goes for 29 bucks. Yep, $30, $29.95. And then I meant to look, but the servos, motor, and all the little other pieces, how much is the, the 30, power pack? $34.95, so $65 you're in the air with a receiver. And how we talked about it taking a hit. If I nose this thing in, or you know, can it take a hit? Well, you saw me at Toledo two years ago taking the ones that were pre-built and bouncing them on their nose off the floor and catching them. Right. The plane was originally designed for full contact combat at CEF. Uh, it won CEF the last two years in in uh, 2013 and 2014. Nice. And uh, that's that's what it was designed for, and that's why it's designed around the 1300 because that's their battery size that they require. Yeah, and Very the TV cool. just worked out really well after the fact because it's got plenty of power to to drag it around. And the great part is if you rip a piece off, or I've actually like I went back into the bottom and had to pull this bottom piece off, and it's just it's EPP, man. I can pick a piece off the floor and glue it back into place if I actually ripped a hole in here somewhere. Foam cac seems to heal it very very well. And. I'm so close. I, I, the prop is turning the right way. I put bullet connectors on here yesterday. Yep. And the only thing left to do for me is to get the control rods connected and get the throw set just right. And Jason, you'll be happy to know I have the CG in the right place. Yeah, it's always important. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. The CG is basically right at the back of the hatch where the hatch magnet is. Yeah. And you're saying that this is probably not going to work for me, that I need to go back in and tilt it down a little bit. I think it needs to be tilted down more. I usually move mine further forward on the nose and have it tilting down because you're going to fly at about a 15-degree angle of attack for the most part. I did not know that. Um, it's okay. You'll just see a lot of sky. Um, yeah, I don't want to see sky. I had was that my spotter didn't tell me that I was over the trees, and as I was coming down, I landed in the trees. That's why the black and red one that I had at Joe Nall is being built because the uh, previous one spent two months in the trees at 75 feet up. Oh, no. I got everything down but the camera. Nice. I saw wow. a picture of that. Was that did you just nice get that? Camera. 
As, and then the other thing I would tell you guys is if you're going to paint yours, you want to build your main flat structure first and then go, go to town with your painting and then put on all the verticals later. When I do mine, I just, I just put painter's tape on it and spray it, and away you go. That's what I did. And the, the top and bottom, I, I paint those separately. I, I build them on the frame, but I don't glue them to it until after I've painted. Yeah. And then the key, and just a FYI, the key things that you see here are still white are the things that are going to touch the ground the most. And my theory there was that I would not put paint on things that are going to come in contact with other things. Well, Jason was talking about the, uh, the coating and stuff. A little docuam on that will give you an indestructible bottom for landing. Uh, right here. Yep. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, I'm excited if the wind cooperates and all that stuff, Jason. We'll go out tomorrow and get it, get it going. Yeah, it's fun. I got to fly uh, Kevin McCleary's at uh, the uh, pecan patch. Yep. He had his all set up for night flying and stuff, and it was a blast, man. So tell yeah, me about the, the launch. The last couple of years, and they're actually selling them on the Ready to Make Ready Made RC website, also. Cool. So you hold it from behind when you launch it like this? I I launch it holding it in my hand with my thumb between the yellow bonds, and then I just give it a shove forward. It is the I guess the throttle is rolling while you do that. Yeah, then you're behind the prop, so it's not an issue. So like. Like that? Yeah, yeah. Either hand, and you know, you're holding the transmitter with the other one, and just give it a, you know, give it about half throttle and shove it forward, and away it goes. I mean, it's got plenty of power, so it's not going to be a problem climbing out. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So, RA, where are you going next? What's your next show? Are you off the road for the while? Um, I'm actually headed to Warwick, New York, this weekend for a two-day show um, with with the, a lot of the guys from the Neat Fair. And then I have a charity event on the 9th of July um, for the Wounded Warriors Project. But my next main show is Watts Over Owatonna in um, Minnesota on the third week of July. Nice. Well, Jason? He's frozen on mine. Uh-oh. Oh, we're, we're still looking good over this way. Okay. Yeah, so I, I basically try and do a show a month. And then, uh, you know, that, that keeps me in production at the same time as getting out there. Joe Nall is a big one because I'm gone for 12 days. Um, Owatonna will be about a, a week. And then the Neat Fair is about another week. Gotcha. So, R.A., do you keep in, uh, do, you, do you watch all this FAA stuff that's going down? Does that affect you? Is it something you care about? Um, it seems to be a lot better than what I imagined. Uh, when they were starting talking about submitting your designs for um, testing and verification and certification, that scared the hell out of me. And I saw a lot of cottage industries were just going to go away. Right. Because it's, it's just, you know, you can't come out with a new design and then wait a year before you can actually sell it. Right. Um, and, you know, the turnaround on that certification was going to be so long that there's no way that, a lot of us would have been able to stay in business. And that, that was the information, that was the, the feeling of most of the vendors I talked to at the shows. Yeah, I was pretty sure that was never going to actually come into fruition for the RC world. Well, the biggest, the biggest problem is that a lot of the people that are making these decisions aren't in the RC world, so that's always a bad thing. Yeah. It, yeah. it does bode well that they actually uh, use their good common sense in this last ruling and uh, hopefully it'll perk some things up. I think a lot of things have been put on hold because of this whole FAA debacle. There's a lot of people that have actually gotten out of the hobby simply because they didn't like the way it was going. Right. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys pack up and sell everything off and get into trains or, or trains. RC cars or you know, non-flying things. Yeah. And on the flip side, it's funny, is, is even the crazy amount of numbers that they have said that have registered, um, the majority of people uh, that I know just ignored everything and aren't even registered and just fly because um, it doesn't, uh, you know, the FAA doesn't, there's no way to enforce it. I'm not, I'm not uh, saying they to do fly. that. I'm yeah. not saying to do that, but I'm just saying there are a lot of people that have not registered and still fly and, and have no care in the world and it's not a problem. 
I'm, I'm one of those people and stuff, but a lot of the stuff that I fly is under the 250-gram limit. Yeah, yeah. So um, that, that makes a lot of sense for me, but, um, yeah, I was sort of waiting for the dust to settle and see what was going on. I didn't even know if I was going to have a business, you know, depending on how it went. Yeah. It is kind of the running joke at the flying fields you go to, and somebody's flying something, like, yeah, do you have your registration number on that? And everybody just kind of laughs. <laughs> that drives me crazy. <laughs> We're lucky. We have a great field with a great bunch of guys. Yeah. There's some of the there's some of the new contests and stuff where that's one of their requirements. That's one of the things that they want you to sign in with. Yeah. I, again, I don't know that we're supposed to be self policing either, but you know, I'm hoping that they use that to get some extra people into um, the AMA because the big thing really is all these outlaws that are going off that are flying, you know unregistered, un uninsured, and just, you know, how deep are your pockets? Let's go have fun. Yeah. Right. And it's just like with a gun. These same people are not going to follow the law and get registered and all that. It's the people that are going to fly in front of something big that they shouldn't, uh, they're not going to ever get legal. Why on earth would they? You know, only the people that are going to do it the right way in the first place would ever get legal. Right, and those are the ones that they came down so hard on. Yeah. Yeah. But the good news is they went positive on this last piece, so hopefully they go positive with us when it comes to our own personal flying. I agree. And, I mean, I, I, I really hate seeing what it's done to the hobby and stuff. And, you know, I, I really feel that there should be a separate classification for pilots versus operators because a lot of these drones that you can go to, you know, go to the store and buy with, you know, a credit card and, and nothing else, a lot of them fly themselves, and all you're doing is saying, hey, I want you to go over there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't see that as the hobbyist market. I see that as a separate a separate entity. Right. Yeah. And the hobby's kind of totally drifted away from that type of quad anyway. You right. Know? That's not what the hot ticket is anymore, I don't think. Jason, what do you think about that? Do you think these DJI Phantom-type quads are what the hobbyist guys that are in the hobby are into? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think there, it is. I think it's it's probably the largest market segment right now is, is just because you've got so many people coming into it, photographers, and it is people that are operators that aren't RC pilots with no RC background or building skills or knowledge, and that's where a lot of the problems started coming in and why this is a became a media issue. But I think there are, I mean, I can, I don't know. We've got a multi-rotor racing club, right, where everybody goes and races, I think the majority of those guys, and, and, and uh, probably this is true a lot of places, all own a quad like that, right? Because they're so good at what they do. It's almost like I mean, you can go take easy pictures, you can get good video, aerial stuff, it's, and they're so inexpensive nowadays that just about every RC guy has one. That's you know not not true globally, but a lot of a lot of club guys that are normal, you know, turn and burn just typical RC dudes are flying these things now as well. It didn't didn't uh, go to that solely, but it's just supplemental to their hobby. I still have my Phantom 1, but I haven't flown it in two years. Yeah. Maybe longer, maybe longer than that. And I remember when I had the Phantom, uh, you were flying natural, and I was like, how does he do it? How does he fly without the GPS? And now it's awesome not to have to worry about a GPS and making sure everything is, uh, you know, right before you actually take off. Yeah. One of the things that I want, want to mention about this and stuff is that uh, a little bit of, of non-hobbyist background that I heard. Um, I was renewing some insurance for my cars and stuff in the, in the lab, and I was talking to the woman that was there, and she said, oh, you do the airplane stuff. What do you think of these drones? And so we got into a conversation. She had gone down to Mexico for a holiday, I believe sometime between Thanksgiving and, and Christmas last year. And they were on the beach, and they had a balcony, and they were facing the water and stuff. And she said, previous years we've had these drones come up and take pictures every once in a while. This year, she said, they had about 50 of them out there around the, around the hotel, wow. all coming up and looking in all the windows. There was no privacy. Wow. You heard the drones of the of the props constantly 
and they were just right there, and it just totally ruined the entire effect of being there on the beach and looking out at the water. Man. So that's something that is the perception of non-hobbyists looking at our hobby, and, you know, she's certainly blaming the hobbyists about that, even though we know that it's a different set of people. Yeah. So that's, something, that's something that the perception from the non the non airplane people or the non the non hobbyists and stuff are really get, giving us a bad rap because they see that as us acting out that way. Right. That would bother me, you know, yeah. if that were yeah, happening. That's not cool. <laughs> right. I yeah. mean, it it would turn you straight into a guy trying to knock one down with a broom, you know. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I mean, that's where you're going to start getting the disruptor guns that you know you can basically yeah. blow up uh, one point at the. The two point four or whatever, and and just uh you know make them return to home or whatever. Yeah, we were in Mexico. It's about midnight. We're all sitting out on the beach uh, on a patio playing guitars. No one was drinking tequila, but uh, there Nobody. was a <laughs> there was a thing coming off one of the balconies, and it was going all the way to the beach and all the way back to the balcony and the guy goes, Jim, that's a drone. And I said, I know what a drone is and there's no way in the middle of the night at dark there's some <laughs> guy flying all the way from there through the, po the palm trees, Jason, I was talking about earlier by the yeah. pool, to the beach and back. All of, I, I just couldn't believe it was uh, actually that. And it was. I have no idea how this guy was doing it so well, so fast. But if you look at them, there's some really low lux cameras available now and stuff, where basically you have the ability to see in you know minimal light. Yeah, yeah. This we had that. We had that years ago with the Sony uh, WD770. Yep. You, you could fly at night, and if there was even a hint of a glow of light, you could see like daytime. It was awesome. This was not a cheap quad either. It was big. That was one thing that threw me off. It was big and black and and just amazingly fast. It was crazy. Yeah, nice. And I've seen it all. Cool, man. Crazy. Well, 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 hopefully there'll be no drones for me this weekend. I'm going to be going to the uh, Possum Toss Tullahoma, Tennessee DLG contest. So I'm going to be flinging some wings. Nice. Cool. We're at a... Um we're at a at a, an actual airport for this meet that I'm going to this weekend and stuff. So they are very very concerned about people flying near the full size and stuff. Mm -hmm. The airport is closed, but there's tie downs all over, and you certainly don't want to stuff something into one of the full size planes. So they're being very careful, and they've already told us that we can't do any FPV on the site. Really? Yeah. It, I guess that's going to vary from uh, you know. Location to location, because a couple years ago we did an FPV specific event at an airport, and they worked closely with the FAA, and, and uh, we had a great place to fly, and and uh, they even had approved FAA approved uh, high altitude flights scheduled. So there was time periods that they would allot that you could go up to a mile or more and fly FPV and come back down and. And it went off without a hitch. There was no close calls. There was no accidents. There was no complaints. So I think it's just going to depend on the local office. They've had a couple of people at these events. This is the sixth annual, I believe, and they've had a couple of people in the past that have been uh, loose cannons, let's just say, and, yeah. and have not been careful around the full size. And so that's been that's been one of the issues. So they decided that they were going to be very controlling. Yeah, I can see how you could get the allure of full-scale flame flying and how cool it is to fly proximity to our RC models. And then you got this giant airplane in the air. It's easy to follow, and, you, you know, I can see how you would want to, with FPV, to go kind of get close to it. Yeah. But that's not very safe to do, folks. Did you see my username down? Oh, I didn't change it. Dang, no, it says rcgroups.com. Oh, let me turn it off and back on. Now what's it say? <laughs> test, test, test. Blue fro, brother. I was going to say blue fo mofo, but I thought that might not be appropriate. I think that's circumventing the swear filter there. Yes, I don't, certainly don't want to break that rule. When you when you get the review done, please post it to the thread on RC Groups for me. Yes, sir. So uh, speaking of that, Jason, when are you leaving for your contest? 
Uh, Saturday morning. I, I got a pilot's meeting at 9 a.m. It's only an hour away, so I'll leave at like 7 o'clock or something. Well, if we get this thing done, I will bring my LCD screen with built-in DVR, and um, we'll do a test flight and videotape that, the launch and the landing, and then I'll uh, record the on-screen stuff and do a little FPV with it. If if the weather lets us, if not, I'm gonna have to wait till I get back uh, from my vacation. Sean, right. I do have a challenge for you. Yes, we'll have to see if this is accomplished. <laughs> so it has to be, uh, you know, there can't be very many people around at the field, but we need to FPV fly that through the shelter at the field. I would like to keep it longer than a day, but it is EPP, so I guess we can oh, get yeah. that. The only thing you got to worry about is scraping your antenna off. You'll be fine with the yeah. air. It's like a giant FPV gate. That's all that is. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll do it. I can do it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make it nice I'll and soft. A spec wing, so you'll be all set with that. That's right. Hey, before we jump out of here, we are at the top of the hour. I was thinking about this bird. Let's see how good I am here. I pulled it up. Horizon Hobby Gyros. I was looking at the ham and twist or the roast beef. It was the PowerBox Systems iGyro 3E. Oh, Isn't that it? kind of gyro. I was looking at the Spectrum Alpha 6. So uh, sharing pages is always tricky, but let's let's give it a shot. Okay, so here's the theory. Um, on smaller FPV-based stuff, I always like a little assistance if I'm in the camera um, with stability. So this thing actually is basically like their AS3X technology, but you can use it on anything. Hmm. The price tag's a little steep, Yeah. but, but uh, I think it would be pretty awesome, if, especially if you can move it around to different craft. So that was something I was thinking about for my little wing or maybe for this thing. What do you think, R.A.? Totally unnecessary? Um, well, no, it's not unnecessary, but it is awfully expensive. Um, personally, I was using a 7-channel Lemon receiver with stability, and those run probably under $20. And I found that uh, it, was, it was just enough to keep it so that it, so that it hands off. It was nice and, nice and secure, but it still let me... Um, turn it on and off with a, with my gear switch, so I could fly it without the stability for periods of time, which was nice also. All right. Well, I'll go take a look at that too. But that was that was what I ended up using on mine. I don't I don't sell those, but that that was something that I grabbed just so that I could do it. I had some of the early Hobby King stability things and everything, and I was never terribly impressed with them. This one works pretty well. It's built into the receiver. And it allows you to use a separate channel to turn it on and off to enable it, which was very good because I had the gain set way too high. And so I was getting all kinds of oscillation on the first couple of flights. And uh, turning it on and off was really nice for being able to set it up. And you this kept an extra 100 bucks in your pocket. How about that? <laughs> really? That's a whole extra airplane right there. Here is some old school stuff, but the Eagle Tree Guardian is essentially the same concept, right? Yep. 62 bucks. It's very tiny. That's another option out there. It is. Yeah, I've, There's I've, lots of lots of flight systems. You know, I'm, I'm really, really happy with those. Well, which ones? This one? The Guardian, yeah. Well, I can't yeah. see anything. You're black at the moment. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Jim, I just say be a man and fly it. Fly it oh, thanks a lot, Jason. <laughs> I'm thinking of all the other people out there, man. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, there's too many people that rely on the technology to keep them flying. This thing flies very well. It's very stable. You'll be happy with it. And it's it's durable enough that if you dork it in, it's going to bounce, and you pick it up, and you throw it back in the air again. Yeah. For me, after flying one, I would say there's no need. Yeah. And it's going to be personal preference. So you might like it, and you might want it, and it's cool, right? And that's, that's for you, and that's no problem. Um, I would only really want stabilization in an airplane if it was like a long-range FPV explorer type airplane, right? So I can kind of let off the sticks. It's going to fly level. It's going to have autopilot return to home. If I get a video issue or something, it can come on back, fly by itself. I think it's 
really a kind of a safety thing versus a letting it fly well, you know, but, if that makes any sense. Like that micro wing, Matt. Go ahead. I was uh, Matt flies a micro wing, and I've got a semi micro FPV wing, and I just think those both those things would really fly and be so much more fun if they were a little more stabilized. Well, the stabilization makes them feel like they are bigger, which is nice. I used it mostly so that I could get stable video, so that I wasn't getting a lot of oscillation and a lot of uh, a lot of wind interference. Because mostly what I was doing at the time was I was looking to shoot um, foliage pictures because I fly in a very treed area. And it was, it was foliage time of year, so I was trying to get um, some nice foliage pictures. And the stability really helped with that. Did it really help? Because I've seen stability on aerial stuff that caught, makes it look even worse because it's constantly fighting and correcting any little movement where if you're flying it, it it's more smoother looking. You're kind of going with the movements instead of a harsh instant correction every time it moves. That was that was turning the gains down. I had the gains uh -huh. turned way, way down, so I wasn't getting any oscillation from it. It was it was really pretty stable, and the nice thing was that it did counteract the little the little gusts that I would see, and you wouldn't even see the beginning of it tipping and stuff, even though you knew cool. that it was crossing crossing wind and stuff. It, it it was good from that standpoint, but again, I had the switch so I could turn it off. Yeah, yeah, being able to tune it's a good thing. Yeah. Well, all right. All right, thank you for uh, joining in at the last minute. <laughs> I was sitting here. I'm actually, I've got a new design that's coming out uh, probably in another week or so that's uh, in the same family as the Blue Foe um, that, uh, that should be interesting. Cool. And I was in the process of doing the uh, build instructions and the picture build, so. Well, I've taken photos of uh, most everything I did. I'm not. I wasn't trying to recreate the uh, instructions, but I, I wanted to show people how it works and what I did personally. Yep. And talking to you has been great because you've told me all the things that I need to know before I actually get out in the field and find out my camera is pointing in the air instead of down the way I need it to. Well, especially if you glued it in. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it out, and I have another camera on a uh, mount, and I think I'm gonna get that hard mounted in there, so then I can just rotate the camera the way I want it. And let us I, know I when you're ready to announce the new one, and uh, we'll we'll do a little news article on that. Okay. Um. Yeah. There's a there's a um. I guess we're gonna talk about it on the Angle of Attack podcast next week. Um. Tim wants me to come down and and. Uh, so it, it should be available probably in a week or so. I need to do some water testing um, because it is float capable. Cool. <laughs> oh, so you're going boats too. Awesome. I like it. I like it. Everybody's going boats. It's all about the boats now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something different. It's something it's that I have a blue float. The blue float. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. We've uh, made you unable to talk for your last four sentences. <laughs> Uh, it's it's just one of those things that that you know I I I've seen something that it's something that is I haven't seen a lot of so I think that it's going to be interesting once it comes out and popular and obviously popular is what I'm shooting for. Awesome. My oh, my concern is that I'm doing a lot of Depron and RC Foam has just announced that they are not going to be importing any more Depron so what they have is the end of the Depron so now I need to look at model airplane foam and some other foams for the designs to continue on the design families. Wow. I've got a call coming in. Hold on. Awesome. Matt Gunn just came in first in another race. Did he really? Nice. Good job, Matty. Well, man, I want to thank all our listeners and viewers out there for hanging out with us and all the non-live viewers that will be watching this later. We always appreciate it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm probably not really going to put a subscribe button in this video. I'm just pointing. But uh, you, there's probably a subscribe button around here somewhere if you're watching this on YouTube. So hit subscribe to find out when we do reviews, event coverage, which, by the way, Miss Ashley is headed to uh, Missouri right now to cover an event. And Matt Gunn is going to bring us some boat information back from the boat show because everyone knows it's all about the boats. Go boats. And Jason Cole is going to the DLG event, although I don't believe you're covering that. Are you, Jason? I'll, I may do something next week about it, but I'm just, I just want to focus on the competition. I really want to try to push hard on comps this year and see how I can do. 
I'm going to work real hard on being a man, like Jason said, and uh, <laughs> not using gyros to maybe tomorrow, and if not, when we get back. And uh, you can look forward to that. I may post some of my uh, my uh, post video or pictures on Facebook just so everybody can take a look until the review actually goes live. I want to thank oh. R.A. for hanging out with us. Thank you, R.A. Link the, uh, link the pictures into my Facebook as well, Jim. I'll do and it. And you can visit him at racores.com. Thank you very Jim much. T. I'm sorry. Dang it. Okay, you talk now, all right. I just said thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank all of y'all. And uh, have a great weekend. You know, it's Thursday, and Thursday's a new Friday. So uh, uh, treat every day like it's your last. I'm Jim T. Graham, your host on rcgroups.com.